Hi everyone. Welcome to our live interview today. I am so excited. I am super excited to be bringing in such a special guest today. We're going to talk about mental health and emotional well-being and how much we should just prioritize that so much because sometimes it just gets lost in the background. So today our guest is a very dear friend of mine, Will Centurion. Now, Will was a performer for many, many years, and he is now a life coach and counselor for performing artists. So how amazing is that? So Will has done many musical theater shows here and abroad. He was also a contestant on So You Think You Can Dance. And he also had a Argentine tango group called Three to Tango. And I was so honored to be one of his dance partners in it and a part of the group, and we did fun workshops and we did gigs and shows and whatever and it was just a lot of fun to be a part of but one gig I can really remember which is just so funny is when we actually did a little cameo slot for um, The Bachelorette Australia and we had to basically teach The Bachelorette and her date this tango routine that we just created and neither of them were dancers. So it was a lot of fun and just really good memories. But anyway, I'm gonna bring in Will and I am super, super excited for you to all have a chat. And if you have any questions, just throw them our way. All right, let's do this. Is it working? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> we did this it. It's actually we working. Did it. Wow. It's actually okay. working. I know, right? So much fun. How fun. We did it. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I just had a couple of clients today. Uh, I've got a little bit of a break Amazing. now and then um, I've got another client and then I've got my last group coaching um, session for a group of uh, eight clients who participated Amazing. in this for four weeks. So a bit of a day today, but excited. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm so honoured that you're here with us, Will. I'm so, so honoured. Thank you so much. And I know you're super busy. I'm, just, so it's, it's, I'm you know. excited this worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we were both like, I don't know, I've never done it before, so I'm, I'm just so happy it worked. But hey, so how's, you how's to... the how's the oh. picture? Are you able to see me and hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, it's just dropping in in and out a little bit, but um, I think that should clear up as we go, hopefully. Okay, but you're definitely right. if, visible. <laughs> yeah, if not, then just tell me, and I'll jump off the Wi-Fi and I'll go on to three G. Okay, no probs. I can do that. Um, okay, so I was okay. going to say, um, do you want to just kind of give everyone like a little background of like maybe what shows you've done um, from like, mm -hmm. you know, things that you worked on to how that's changed now and like what you're working on now? Yep. Okay. Yep. So where do I start? Um, I didn't start any formal training until I was 18. So 18, I decided, well, I didn't decide that I wanted to be a dancer. I was allowed to be a dancer at 18. So I did a year at Brent Street. That was my first year of dancing. And then I did two years here in Melbourne at Dance World. So I did three years of training all up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when I finished Dance World, I moved overseas and I based myself in Germany. And then I worked in Germany for eight years. Yeah, so I was going to say, I think it was about eight I, years, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 2000 to 2008. Um, Incredible. So in the time that I was there, I did uh, Miami Nights, which was a German musical. It was kind of like Strictly Ballroom. Uh, Aida, um, Disney's Aida, I got to do We Will Rock You. I got to do uh, a return season of Miami Nights. Um, what else did I do? There's probably a couple of other shows there that I can't recall at this time. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Germany was a bit of a blur. I was young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right. So let's say, yeah. So let's say about about three or four shows while I was over there in Germany, and then I returned to 
uh, Australia and I got to do So You Think You Can Dance in 2010. And then from there, I went on to West Side Story and then it kind of cannonballed. So I went like West Side Story, I think it was like a chorus line. Then it was like um, The King and I, then it was Aladdin, then it was... Or then it was the Lion King, then it was Aladdin, then it was In the Heights. Um, I sort of ended up doing about five or six shows back to back. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I took my last back um, last year in In the Heights at the Sydney Opera mm-hmm. House. And I hung up my dancing shoes and now I'm a fully qualified counsellor and life coach and I run a mental health service that focuses on performers. Amazing. It's just so, I just love it because, you know, sometimes when we choose one path and we kind of go, this is just what I'm going to do forever. Like this yeah. is, this is it. And then all of a sudden, like just certain things happen in life and you go, actually, I might just veer off this way a little bit. So I just love and admire yeah. what you've done and how you've also kept it within the industry. And it's now, yep. you're just, you're just such a great help to everybody that I think it's, very much needed in the industry and it's just so nice that you've got so much experience under your belt that Mm -hmm. you can Mm -hmm. relate to everybody that Mm -hmm. will come to you and you know I think that's important too because sometimes if people can't relate to you as much as they can Mm -hmm. give you tools and guides on everything I think it's yeah I think it takes a lot longer to navigate where you need help with the most if I can say it like that but I think with yeah. you, you would be like, yep, I've gone through that. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's awesome what you're doing. Really, really awesome. So yeah, thank you. you. I, I, I wanted to create, <laughs> oh, thank you. I wanted to create a service <laughs> um, that basically filled the gaps that existed when I was um, in the industry. So I struggled a lot at auditions. Yeah. I struggled a lot covering lead roles. I struggled a lot playing a principal role in a show. Um, I struggled a lot as a singer. Um, you know, I would forget choreography in, in final auditions and, you know, um, shoot myself in the foot. And so for mm. me, there were a lot of mental health challenges. There were a lot of emotional challenges. And I wanted to create a service that could bridge the gaps between you and what you're disconnected from. So it, it very much is industry yeah, informed. It ver- everything that I do comes from lived experience. Um, it's not about me, so I don't talk about myself um, with clients, yeah. but I do sometimes try to pass on just that shared story that we might have and, um, yeah. and how maybe some insights might be helpful. Oh, 100%. I think they would, you'd, I don't know, I guess, um, they would feel an ease to be able to open up to you. Mm. And, you know, cause sometimes you can say to someone, Oh, I'm a performer. And they're like, Oh, what do you do? And it's like, Oh, um, a yeah. bit what's of your real job? <laughs> like it's very hard to like, <laughs> what's your real job? Yeah. It's like, well, that is my job. Yeah. So it's, it's nice. And like I said, I go back to going, it's just, you, you're relatable to people. They could open up to you a lot faster. I would imagine. Um, because they don't have to break down all of those little categories. I do this yeah. or when I go this, you know, you can just lay it out for them straight away, which is it's very helpful when it comes to that because, number one, it is it is hard when you start opening up about it, let mm-hmm. alone going, mm-hmm. oh, this person doesn't believe in me or this person doesn't understand. Yeah. Like, so then you start thinking, yeah. should I even come back again for another session? So yeah. with you, I can imagine that. Yeah. A lot of people would just feel comfortable and at ease and be like, this guy gets it. And I think that's yeah. important for everyone out there. Yeah, it's, I, you know, I've lived it. I, I know what it's like to be a full-timer. I know what it's like to be an emerging professional. I know what it's like to, in the middle of your career to sort of burn out and try to find motivation again. Um, I know what yeah. it's like at the end of your career needing to make the decision to say goodbye to a relationship that you've built, you know, you and, and that creativity, yeah. um, that thing that you do. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I hope that my lived experience is helpful for people and, um, and I hope that it makes them comfortable when they sit in the room with me. Yeah, totally, totally. I might try and um, 
if you can swap your Wi-Fi to your 4G or 3G, yeah. whatever it is, I just want to see if that changes because we keep cutting out, I think. Okay. Yeah. So I might just have to um, just disconnect for a little bit and then I'll just jump back on again. Is that okay? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, let's, let's, let's. So I'll just continue talking. <laughs> um, as you can see, he's, yeah, he's doing a lot of workshops and seminars for a lot of full-time uh, courses around the country. And then he's also doing, um, I want to say for a lot of performing artists in the industry, he's creating seminars and packages and things like that. And it's super, super important. Oh, hello. You hello. Back again. I hope this is yeah. a little bit better. I hope so. Yeah, that's okay. But we're doing good. We're here. I can still hear you. I think it just great. drops out and delays. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. All good. Um, so should I throw some questions at you? Yeah, let's go. Let's do okay. it. Let's do it. Okay. So first one is what was your aha moment when you wanted to change careers, but yet stay in the ind industry? Yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, my last three years in the arts was really difficult. So I had a lot of battles with depression, a lot of battles with anxiety, a lot of battles with imposter syndrome. And so that effort reward balance was out of sync. It just felt like I was um, putting in an incredible amount of effort to not get that happiness or that satisfaction back that I used to get from being a performer, from being on stage. Mm -hmm. So because of my um, overwhelming experience, because of those really low moods and because that, that really sort of emotional journey, I had to consider, you know, is this thing making me happy anymore? Yeah. Is it giving me what I need to be fulfilled and just to be happy in my life? And, and the answer was no. The answer was yeah. um, I've done a lot over 20 years and I can keep fighting to get another role as a dance captain or get another role as a swing or get another role as a cover or get another visible um, or get into the ensemble of another show. I could, I could keep fighting for all of that, but I realised that I'd done mm. it. And I was, I, I ticked those boxes. And so really I would be putting myself through pain just to have a repeat of something I had already accomplished. So that yeah. realization for me was it's time to start looking at other parts of myself. And so I went and I saw a psychologist and we did a lot of work together. And the psychologist actually opened the door for me to be curious about mental health and counseling okay. psychology and life coaching. So yeah. in our sessions, we worked on what other skills did I have? What other things did I like? What other things was I passionate mm -hmm. about? And that led me to enroll in ACAP and do the Diploma of Counselling. And then I loved it so much that I did the Bachelor of Counselling Coaching. And that segued mm -hmm. into me having a new career as a mental health practitioner. Yeah. And how many years did that take up? Was it like four years altogether yeah. or was that... Oh, four, four years. years yeah. Yep. It was four years. I remember you juggling, like I would come and see you in a show or something. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing all of this. And I was like, oh my God. So yeah. it was, I, um, it was I just used to so run out nice of, to see. I used to run out of the, I used to run out of uni and around the corner and straight into my stage door and drop my backpack yeah. off in my dressing room and run on stage for warm up. Yeah. So it was a, uh, a bit incredible. of, it was double duties. It was double duties for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what it's like though. Hey, like, I mean, when we all try to take a, not try, but when we all want to take that mm -hmm. different journey, it's, you are, you're balancing everything. And you're like yeah. at first thinking this is very overwhelming. How the hell do yeah. I balance it? You know, that's me with motherhood and work. And then, I mean, you know what it was like for me today. We had a laugh on the phone the other day because I was yeah. like, so I dropped the little one off and then I got to go to work and then I come home, I'm going to slap on a face, <laughs> look yeah. beautiful press yep. record and off we yep. go. And it's like, that's what we do, but we do it yeah. because we love it, you know? Yep. And it's, I think it's all about growing. Like we're always growing. We're always learning. We're always that student in life. Yep. And that's, yep. that's what I think anyway. And that's what I love to live by because we never know it all. So yep. it's such a, I mean, did you feel like when you, when you started on this path, did you start feeling like I could actually go this way? 
with this. I could actually go that way with that. Like, how did you, did you just focus on the one thing or did you think I can branch off and do different things within this career path now? I don't think I thought anything. That's, that was the mm. issue. Um, I was not conscious of the fact that I could make decisions. I was not conscious of the mm. fact that I could decide where I wanted my life to go. Um, you know, I could yeah. identify the pathways that I wanted to pursue. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to help people with. It's like mm. you, you are the author of your life. And when you are aware of that, yeah. then you can make those decisions consciously. I think for me, yeah. because I started dancing at such a late, late age, like it was a bit YOLO. My whole journey mm. was a little bit YOLO. I was like, let's just yeah. see what's going to happen. And, oh, my God, we're going here now. And, great, we're going here now. And, oh, okay, I yeah. just booked a show and now I'm going overseas. And, like, but at no time did I have authority over my life. And I mm. wish I had because I yeah. think I just would have been a lot more present in the decisions mm. that I made. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, I mm. It's what we all feel like going mm. through the end and as much as we love it, um, but it is exactly that, you know, and I think there's one thing that I will write about eventually, but it's always being that yes man yep. as well that mm. sometimes we're so afraid to go, no, I actually don't want to do that. Yep. I don't feel like that's right for me. And yep. then you're convinced otherwise and then you end up in this vicious cycle of going, mm. yep, I'll do that. And then you go into the next, yep, yep, oh, because I did that, I'm, I'm now here. And then sometimes you just feel like you go way off track and you think, mm -hmm. who am I? <laughs> you, yep. you start to be, you know, and then you start to live a life of what you've been told to be like, yep. well, this, you know, you get pigeonholed basically. Yep. Um, but I think once we learn to, you know, our voice is important to say, yep actually, this is me and this is what I need in my life, then I think that's when people start actually going, oh, okay, I can take you seriously, you know, and yeah. they know that you're going to stand up for yourself because yeah. you know what's right for you. But yeah. um, anyway, moving on, <laughs> yeah. I'll say, do you, and you probably answered this anyway, but like, do you miss being on stage? I love that you asked me this. Um, <laughs> Of course I no, am. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Yeah. And it's so, it's so hard for people to hear, um, but I actually don't. I yeah. love what I do. I am so creative in what I do that it substitutes that creativity yeah. that I used to feel on stage. So I'm still doing me. I'm still home. I'm still tapping into that creativity. I just don't have to do it eight shows a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have to put my body through hell and, and, you know, all of the other chaos that comes along with being a stage performer. I, I don't mm. have to do that anymore. There are certain parts of the industry that I do miss, the community yeah. side of things, um, just that passion and perseverance that, you know, we've got being surrounded by that energy all the time when it's not, you know, crazy, when it's channeled. Yes. <laughs> Um, you know, it's yeah. like being surrounded by that energy I miss, you know, like the social events and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff, the connecting with people. But I, I so do not miss doing eight shows a week and yeah. going through a rehearsal period and living out of a suitcase and, and all of the other mm -hmm. stuff that comes hand in hand with what we do. Yeah, that's true. I think once you get situated, sometimes it just feels so nice. To go, mm. oh, I can unpack and put it in a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be like, oh, I have a selection of. I used to love like actually coming back home from like a contract away, and then looking through my wardrobe, feeling like I've gone shopping, and go, yep. oh my god, I have all these clothes I can choose from, as opposed to yeah. everything I only have in my suitcase. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just it is that life that you get used to, and I know that's only like a minor little thing, but. Yeah. To us that have lived that life, it, it's huge. You feel yeah. you feel like, is this what it's come to? <laughs> but, yeah. um, it but got, like you it said, got think... harder for me. It, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, uh, my experience is my experience. I can only talk about my own experience. It got harder yeah. for me. So as I started to push 40, um, just the mental exertion and the physical exertion that was required mm. to sustain um, the life of a performer got... Yeah got hard for me. And so um, that's what I don't miss. 
there's um, a freedom about what I do and there's a balance in what I do now. So I welcome that more than all of that chaos that I lived through. Yeah. And you know what? It's kind of like we should all go, yeah, pat on my back for the chaos that we do live in and we still come through the other end. Mm -hmm. And it's like you just wonder how how did we balance it, you know, and what what could we use back then that would we think, oh, I I use the same techniques now, but it's like, no, not really. Mm -hmm. Like we've, you know, we grow and evolve, grow and evolve, grow and evolve. And mm-hmm. it's just, um, I mean, for me personally, I think well, with the article that I'm putting up, um, it, it's like when I was away overseas on a contract and I think I told you this story and it was like I was literally, I received really devastating news that day mm. and it just took me into a shocking place. Like mm-hmm. I just felt so alone. I couldn't really express it because I didn't have my nearest and dearest with me Mm -hmm. to be able to say, Hey, I need to tell you something, you know, um, or I'm feeling this. Can I talk to you? You know, I Mm -hmm. I didn't have anyone I could really, really trust, you know, at the time. And I was just in the wings ready to go on. And a friend of mine, he was about to go on and he just looked at me and he knew how much I was hurting. And I just Mm -hmm. like, I had the makeup and the costume and everything ready to go, the glitz and glam and just tears streaming down my face because yeah. that's all it took. It just took him to look at me and I was like, oh, yeah. oof. And then it started and then you've got no choice. It's like, bam, the lights are on. You're opening yeah. the show and that's it. And you just got to go out and just pretend like nothing was bothering me, nothing was affecting me. But I carried that. Mm. for so long for the rest of the contract until I could come home Mm. and deal with it. And it's just so hard because then you think you go back to what you're saying. It's like you kind of, uh, you don't absorb everything that you're a part of at that time because of all these things going on that you're just like on autopilot, just working and doing what you've got to do. You're trying to survive. Yeah. It's like a survival tactic. (laughs) That's right. And Mm -hmm. really at the end of the day, like now, it, I, I have so much more knowledge and tools that I can use for myself in order to go just get myself in check type of thing and do what I've got to do and prioritize yeah. myself and yeah. compared to what I had back then, you know, and I wish I had yeah. that back then, you know, um, that but wisdom again. Yeah. And like, we just, yeah, I, I just think, imagine if we had all of the tools we have now, <laughs> to be able to yeah. use to what we had, you know, when we were yeah. going through it. And yeah. it was like, imagine the burden that we would have just released so quickly yeah. and the healthier choices we would have made. Like, yeah, you know, because it. I'm sure we all went down that path and went, I've got to deal with it this way because this is all I know how to do to block it out right now. And um, that doesn't help at the end of the day. <laughs> it just comes back on in. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I respect Healthier that. choices. I, think, um, I love that you said that. It's about making healthier choices. Yeah, because I, that stays with you. And mm. because then when we don't make those healthy choices, then we end up regretting what we've just done. Yeah. And then we're living with that on top of whatever we're going through. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it all? Like we are only human at the end of the day. How mm. do you just deal with it all? You yeah. know, so the, the weight gets heavier and heavier and heavier until we just completely hit rock bottom yeah. and then just have to re- rebuild from there. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll keep going. So, (laughs) again, you've probably answered this as we're talking, but how has it transformed your life specifically? Wow. Okay. Um, I Just the sense of satisfaction that I get from being trusted the way that I do, connecting with people the way that I can, helping them along their journey, supporting them when they feel vulnerable, um, sharing insights, um, learning from them just as much as, you know, um, they learn from me. Um, I, I can't, I can't tell you how there's no words to describe how fulfilling yeah. this, this chapter of my life is. I don't know how long it's going to go for. I hope it goes for a really, really long time, but like, I I really do feel like this was my call to action. I I feel as though this is what I'm meant to be doing with my life. And so satisfaction that comes from that 
is priceless. Um, you know, I, I just the people that I meet, the stories that I hear, uh, you know, the stuff that I get to witness um, yeah. is it just doesn't compare to anything. It really is so rewarding. So I love what I do. Yeah. I totally love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And that's what it comes down to. Cause then it doesn't feel like work, you know, when you are really striving through what you're passionate about and it gives you that drive anyway. Like even when you feel like, Oh, today I'm tired and whatever, but you still show up because it's yeah. what you love and it's what you're passionate yeah. about. Yeah. And it, it's just, yeah, there, again, yeah, no words can describe it. Yeah. So I just, I, I really like that. I admire that. Um, Thank you. So I'm, <laughs> just, just as we carry on, guess what I've got to do? I've got to take off the time limit off my social okay. media. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because my Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn are about to shut down in five minutes because I put a timer okay. on my social media. Um, so oh while we're gosh. talking, <laughs> I've got to take the timer off because otherwise it's going to shut down. So okay. just well, give, me, I'll... give me a second while you chat. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, uh, what else? Okay, so we've got more questions here. Okay, so while you're doing that, let's think about maybe what would be your number one message for everyone today? I know that's a big ask, but I'm sure you've got a message out there. Oh, no, he's gone. Okay, cool. So it's just me. All right. So I'll tell you another story as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I went through a, a, a massive change in my life as well. So I'm performer uh, to mother. So I'm experiencing motherhood. I have a three-year-old daughter who is, divine and I just absolutely adore her with every part of my being um but I am a single mum and so uh when she was nine months that's when my life changed and we had to yeah basically make the decision to um do it on our own so a lot of a lot of the emotional well-being and you know mental health things that we're talking about that plays a big role in that so, Will, I'm just talking about um, how my, I asked you a question and you, like, you actually really did just disconnect. So I was like, oh, cool, I'm just talking to myself. Yep. <laughs> um, so I was just telling everyone as well, like even with my life, how mm. my life changed when, you know, my daughter was nine months and yep. my, my life took a turn and how to balance out being a performing artist mm. and motherhood and a mm -hmm. single mum. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking about how, well, I was getting to it, but how even that, like my emotional state and my emotional well-being of how important that was to yeah. keep that in check because that yeah. was not only for myself, but if I couldn't show up for myself, I could not be there for her. And I didn't yeah. want to project anything out on her because it has nothing to do with her. It was just mm -hmm. me trying to balance out all those things when it comes to work and then mm -hmm. just everyday life. And I just find like over the, cause now she's three, obviously, as you know, but she, over those years of, again, learning tools, talking to people, um, also knowing that the more you talk about it, you also end up surrounding yourself with similar people that go through mm -hmm. the similar situations. And I think that, we get scared not to vo voice anything when we're yeah. feeling like we're going through something. It's yeah. almost like I can't talk about it because number one, I feel ashamed. Number two, yeah. I just, I, I just would rather do this alone because I don't want anyone to look at me in any other way. And I think it's almost the opposite. It's almost like I need to talk to someone about this. Mm. And when you do, then again, you can be directed in the right direction and get, you know, get to talk to the people that need to hear you and hear your voice mm. and to help you get through that. And I feel like that was huge for me. So it got yeah. to basically knowing who I was again, you know, like yeah. who am I and just showing up for myself, you know, each yeah. and every day. And by doing that and really being dedicated to that and mm. having the discipline and knowing that it's okay 
to like fall into a heap and then, yeah. you know, get strong again. But I think, yeah, just identifying all of those things and then working through that. And we're always working through it because we're always going to have our ups and downs. But just working through that, mm. I think, has gotten me into such a different mindset and place today than I was three yeah. years ago when I was going through yeah. it all. So I think, yeah, yeah, I think, I don't know, I guess you can agree, but it is, it's so important, isn't it, just to allow people to say like, hey, yeah, it's yeah. okay, like this is what I'm going through and to not be judged by that Yeah, and to ask for the help. It's, un it's unpacking and checking in. It's so important, yeah. just the art of unpacking and checking in with yourself. Um, unpacking comes in many, in many ways. Like you don't always have somebody that you can talk to, but that doesn't mean that you mm. can't unpack your experience. Like you can journal, you can reflect, um, you know, you can take time to check in with yourself emotionally and psychologically. Like not everybody has the opportunity to access a GP or a, or a counsellor okay. or a life coach or a psychologist right there in that moment. But that doesn't mean that you don't have resources within your own um, network that you can't use, you know, like call a friend, uh, you know, just sit some, take some time for yourself and reflect, get a journal, unpack your story, write it out, you know, tell it yeah. like it is, how you're feeling it. And so that allows you the opportunity to just check in on yourself and check in where you are, what kind of mindset yeah. have you got, where, what, what, you know, like in what direction are your emotions swaying? Um, you know, what, what's this story that you're living in and how much weight is it placing on you? When you get to peel back the layers on all of that, it shifts your entire experience. So yeah, the yeah, art of yeah. unpacking and checking in is vital for yeah. um, personal health and well-being. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I think, like, it, it goes hand in hand. Like, I mean, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. I think this doesn't just refer to anyone in the performing arts industry mm -hmm. but we can talk about it for being in the performing arts industry for people out there because it is a tough industry mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. it's it's very hard like a lot of us do wear our hearts on our sleeves but then a mm -hmm. lot of us don't you mm -hmm. know because we want to keep let's call them issues but they're not issues but we want to keep that to ourselves so we don't I don't know I guess feel I don't know left out or whatever yeah. you want to say but I, I definitely think it's it's a huge thing that everyone yeah. goes through and we've all got our own little things that we go through. Um, and I think the more we talk about it and voice it, yeah. it just becomes normality for people yeah. to say, yeah, it's all good. Like I went through that too. You know, yeah. I found that as soon as I started voicing things and, you know, because you don't want to feel like you fail. Like if you feel a certain way, you're like, I feel like I've failed because, like, why am I going through this if I'm, yeah. you know, like just, what's wrong with just me? breaking it up that way? Yeah, what's wrong with me? Why am I like this? Or yeah. why me? You know, but the minute you kind of just flip that switch and change perspective, it's like it's just amazing the breakthroughs that you can have with Yeah. That. It's important yeah. also to identify that, like, you can't, you won't always find a safe space where you can do that. If you're mm. in a show, if you're engaged in, in, you know, some kind of interaction with someone, if like life goes on, life doesn't stop for you. Like in the moment, you won't always find that safe space to unpack yeah. and check in and that you create that it's your, it's your responsibility to create that for yourself. Yeah. If not in the moment, then after, then shortly yeah. sometime after. So you can process what you're going through and you can take those bricks out of your backpack and you don't have to carry them around for forever. Yeah, so true. So, so true. Well, I was going to say to you uh, <laughs> before we just connected yet again and I was talking to myself, um, what would be your number one message for everyone? And I know that is like, yeah, it's a big ask, but what would you, yeah. what, what's your go-to? Like, you know, when you're doing your workshops and your seminars and things like that, what is it that you can say, this is my number one message to you? Um, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, yeah, no, that's okay. It's, it's, I mean, how do you, how do you say this in one statement? Just noticing if, if, if you don't change anything about if your life, if it, you know, like just, just notice what you're doing, notice how you're speaking, notice how you're thinking, notice how you're behaving. 
because noticing what you're going through or what you're doing is the gateway to making some kind of shift or some kind of change. So give yourself the opportunity to notice what is happening for you. Give yourself the opportunity to notice how you are feeling and why you are feeling that way, why you are reacting Mm -hmm. to a situation instead of responding. Um, The art of noticing is a game changer because it means that you have stepped back enough from what's going on to be able to create the space to think about it differently or to respond to it differently. And so this is not about, you know, like here are these skills, become a different person overnight, like change what you do tomorrow, even though you've been doing it for 20 years. It's not about that. It's just about just notice why you do and what you do it and notice if there's any room for shift. Beautiful. That's amazing (laughs) advice. (laughs) You kidding? That's amazing. (laughs) Oh, this is why we love you. (laughs) That's amazing. Thank you for that. That's, and I hope people take that away with them too, because that is just, that's yeah, really, really lovely advice. Mm. And I think if people, let's say this is, let's, say the last question if people were on a similar path to you let's say they're feeling like i'm a performing artist and mm-hmm. i want to venture off into doing life coach or whatever it is what would your like what what advice could you give them um i guess i i guess check in with yourself if that effort reward balance is happening because we've only got one life and yeah. and it's important that you enjoy what you do You know, like Mm -hmm. anything could happen tomorrow. So if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then something's out of, um, you know, you're working for your life rather than your life working for you. So check in with yourself and just, you know, assess whether that effort reward, you know, um, um, measurement is in balance. And if it's not, then know that you have the right to make a different set of choices you have the right to be curious about what could potentially come next. Um, yeah. And you have the right to be brave enough to, to explore the possibility of embarking upon a new chapter. Yeah. You know, like, so that's what I did. You know, I, I was curious about mental health. I, was, I wanted to learn about things that I didn't know about. I wanted to explore mm. some other parts of myself and some other, you know, um, um, facets of life. And I got there through learning, not through proving anything, but through learning, you know, I was open to learning all over again. I was open to learning at like 39 or however old I was when I, you know, started that academic journey. So Mm. it's just, it's that just make the decision for yourself, whether you are truly happy with what you do. And if Mm. you're not, then open yourself up and be curious about learning what could come next. That's right. And it goes back to always be the student. And that's, again, like what I live by. It's like just always be the student, continue to grow, continue to evolve. Like it's, there is always something out there for Mm -hmm. us to learn. And Mm -hmm. without that, I mean, life would be boring, right? Like (laughs) we, we want to be learning and we want to be curious and, I think number one thing is to be brave once you do yeah. step out. I think it's all about, I don't know, maybe, you, yeah, you, if you agree with me on this one, but it's, it's all about um, just what you feel. And when you get that, that gut feeling, knowing that this is going to change your life, but you mm-hmm. might be able to help others in such a way that fulfills you, even mm-hmm. if you never get paid for it. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, we get so used to chasing the dollar, right? Like it's like, yeah. I've got to hustle. I've got to do this. I've got to do da, 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 da. But then at the end of the day, like you get so much more fulfillment when, yeah. you, you know, you've helped someone or you've even helped yourself, you know, yeah. and you can take away what you've learned that day. And yeah. um, again, you go back to journaling and think like, I love journaling. And mm-hmm. I used to do that. Oh, I still do that actually. And I feel like that's such a great tool and mm. everyone should be doing it because you just literally don't think about it. You just write. And what's fun is like, then you just close it, put it away and maybe read it in a week time and go, let's yeah. just see what I wrote last week. 
And then you can see how much you've shifted even in a week yeah. to be like, wow, I was really like, that was a dark place back then. <laughs> you know, yeah. That was only a week ago. Or yeah. I was feeling amazing back then. And how did that change this week? Like, it's just, yeah. I think those things are really great exercises for yourself, for yeah, your own development. It, it allows you to understand that everything that you are going through is temporary. Yeah. And that, you know, while you're in the, the middle of it, it may seem heavy and it may seem painful and it's allowed to be because it's happening to you, mm. but you yeah. will not sit in that experience forever. Um, you know, so yeah, it just allows you to acknowledge that everything that, what, everything that you're going through is temporary and there is always hope and there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's a nice way to end the interview. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there is always the light and we have to keep going like that's yeah. just how it is yeah but no it's been you don't so have to wonderful you to don't see have your to face. you choose to you choose <laughs> no that's to. right yeah absolutely yeah. you don't have to keep going you choose to keep going yeah <laughs> that's right 100 percent no i've loved i've loved having you here will thank you so much it's like thank you. so humbling <laughs> so so nice it's just nice to see your face gosh yeah i feel like i haven't seen you forever but I think, when was the last time? January? No. Yeah. December? Definitely pre-COVID. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely. Because uh, yeah. you were visiting I, I, Sydney. Yeah. It's amazing to have a, a, an unreal and, um, you know, just a, a, an uncensored um, opportunity <laughs> to, to chat to each other and just to sort of tell our stories. Well, so uncensored thank you. and real. Hello. Yeah. Uncensored and real. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to, to be able to chat yeah. to you today and to share. No, oh, no, just, yeah. Pleasure was mine. I'm just, I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. And I know we'll catch up again soon. And I'm yeah. thinking of you because Melbourne, yeah. I mean, Melbourne's having it tougher than anyone, I think at the moment. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're thinking of you all. Thank you. Okay, but I'm going to send you so much love and I'm going to end the interview here. And okay. for everyone that's watching, um, we obviously you can, you can view this video again. I'm going to post it up later. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and make sure you all follow Will because he's just, he's just awesome and he can guide you and help you along your way. <laughs> but uh, sending you so Thank much you. love, Will. So much love. Okay, I'll <laughs> chat to you soon. All right. Mwah. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>